Greetings Guardians, my name is Bifear. So, the final shape reveal had some of the biggest reveals that we've seen in a while, and I think it'd be fair to say that the most narratively significant ones were the reveal of the dread and the idea of transcendence. This is part of Prismatic, a fun subclass addition for anyone who is looking to use something that has a little bit more spice to it than just your typical subclass in Destiny, but of course, in terms of the narrative, there are far greater implications. I touched on it briefly the other day when we went over the reveal, but now I wanted to make a dedicated video on the way that transcendence might affect the story and how it might tie into the very idea of the final shape itself. Okay, let's step back a little. What is the final shape? That's a question we've asked a whole bunch of different times, but let's just go over it one more time. The idea of what the final shape is has been muddled a lot over the years and has been kept deliberately vague in some instances of the lore. Therefore, what the final shape is really depends on who you ask. If you're going by the account of the Winnower's perspective in the Unveiling lore book, regardless of whether you believe that lore book to be legit or not, the final shape is a universe in which the strong live and the weak die thus reducing the suffering the weak must endure and leading to a more perfect universe, a universe sharpened to a point. According to the unveiling law, this pattern is the final shape because it's the way that the universe always works out. Complex systems can ultimately all be reduced down to this very simple idea. The strong survive, the weak do not. The Hive also share this conception. Eris told us that the idea of the final shape was discussed in Hive Apocrypha as a state of being where everything that can be removed has been removed, where all weakness has been stripped from what is strong. This is the foundational principle of the Hive's sword logic, which is essentially exactly as the Winnower stated the universe's final shape to be. Existence is the struggle to exist. But then, there's the witness, and there are its disciples. Funnily enough, None of them could seemingly agree on the nature of the final shape and what it was, and that is despite the fact that the witness was searching for the Traveler all this time to enact it. It never bothered to remove any uncertainty within its own ranks, thus allowing differing versions and conceptions of the final shape to exist despite it knowing that there was only one, the one that it would enact. The unknown disciple from the Inspiral Law Book shows us within that entry known as the cave exactly how deep this division ran. Take a listen to this. Perhaps none who serve you have the capacity to grasp your vision. And so, rather than waste more of your time and attention on explaining something they will never hold, it is enough that they will act as you will. The witch and her hive carving single-mindedness out of the cloth of the universe that whispering nightmare seeking the fullest gamut of existence, the Upender destroying all differentiation. So even as this unknown disciple mentions the idea of the final shape, it refers to it in three different contexts beyond the fourth that it holds for itself, a gamut of terrifying existence for Nezarek which he might feast upon, a sharp and single-minded universe built upon survival, as is conceived by the Hive and Savathun, and the destruction of all that do not matter and the reign of nihilistic silence by Rulk. None of these groups know what the final shape really is. They simply trust the Witness to know and to guide them to it. And what is the final shape according to the Witness? Well, if we're to believe Arsa's recitations, the Witness craved a universe where there was no life and no death, where purpose and perfection are achieved by a combination of light and dark, where the chaos of the light can be reined in by the formative power of the darkness, and where the greater vision of the darkness's purpose can be brought about by the energies of creation found in the light, a universe where there is no suffering and where no one would need to die, a universe where suffering has been erased. The final shape for the Witness is often referred to as salvation because it is the universe freeing itself from the cycle of life and death. The final shape is also representative of the purpose for the Precursor people that created the Witness, 
but even they disagreed on the best way to achieve their final shape and what it might be. In a sense, it'd be very easy to sum up the final shape simply as perfection itself, and to understand that perfection is different to all sorts of people. Or perhaps that it's a freedom from restraints and a mandate to carry out one's flawless purpose. We've thought about what the final shape is from the perspective of a lot of characters, but what about the perspective of the one character that nobody's actually thought to ask? What does the final shape represent to a character like the Traveler? Or more specifically, if we're going to become truly mythical, the Gardener? This is most definitely me jumping the gun a little bit. If you've watched lore videos on my channel for a while, you'll know that I have not recently discussed unveiling. This is deliberate. I have been working towards creating a video on unveiling for a while. I needed inspiration to strike, and recently it did. This is something that has really pushed me to make content on it. However, I understand that in simply mentioning the idea of the gardener, there are going to be a lot of people who simply roll their eyes or perhaps even dismiss anything I'm about to say out of hand. I would encourage you to simply hold on and, well, just humor me for the moment. There will also be people who will never have heard of the idea of the gardener. So for those of you who don't know, here are the basics. In the lore that we learn from the lore book Unveiling, we hear about a gardener and a winnower in a garden at the beginning of time. The gardener is a force of life and creation. The winnower is a force of death and destruction. They existed because they must exist. They didn't have a cause. They existed because they simply were. It was before time, and it was because it was. The winnower and the gardener used to play a great game of sorts. A game of possibilities referred to as the flower game. Within this flower game, the same pattern, which the winnower called the final shape, would repeatedly emerge like clockwork. Without end, the patterns would go on. This began to bore the gardener, who would seed life of various kinds and forms, and yet, always, they would be reduced to this same pattern. She demanded, according to the winnower's account found in Unveiling, that a new rule should be allowed, a rule that would allow for more complexity to exist within the game of possibilities. This led to a standoff between the two, which, according to the winnower's account, in Unveiling, went something like this. I looked up in shock. I said, what? What do you mean? A special new rule. Something to... The gardener threw up their hands in exasperation. I don't know. To reward those who make space for new complexity. A power that helps those who make strength from heterodoxy. And who steer the game away from gridlock. Something to ensure that there's always someone building something new. It'll have to be separate from the rest of the rules running in parallel so it can't be compromised, and we'll have to be very careful so it doesn't disrupt the whole game. All you will do, I said, with rising panic, fury, is delay the dominant pattern that will overrun the others. It is inevitable. One final shape. No, it'll be different. Everything will be different. Every way you look. Everything will be the same. Your new rule will only make great false cysts of horror full of things that should not exist, that cannot withstand existence, that will suffer and scream as their rich blisters fill with effluent and rot around them. And when they pop, they will blight the whole garden. Whatever exists because it must exist and because it permits no other way of existence as the absolute claim to existence. That is the only law. No, the gardener said. I am the growth and preservation of complexity. I will make myself into a law in the game. And thus we became two parts of the game. And the laws of the game became gnomic and open to change by our influence. 
and I had only one purpose and one principle in the game, and I could do nothing but continue to enact that purpose, because it was all that I was and ever would be. I looked at the gardener. I looked at my hands. I discovered the first knife. Now again, I can already hear a sizable contingent of the law community listening to this with a degree of concern. The status of the unveiling law is as untrustworthy as it comes, and it hasn't been necessarily confirmed whether or not it has been retconned by the existence of the witness, and whether it is actually something that just exists purely as witness propaganda designed to turn us away from the Traveler so that it can corrupt us. That is a really hotly debated topic in the community today, and it is something that I wanted to try and address in a separate, larger video on the witness generally. However, entertain me for just a moment and ask yourself, what is the purpose of the Traveler? I mean, we know what it does. It seeds worlds and gives life, such as the nature of the light. But what we don't know is why. Even the precursors didn't truly know. But here in Unveiling, at least the gardener is able to tell us what its purpose was. It spells it out. I am the growth and preservation of complexity. I will make myself into a law in the game. If we extrapolate a little and understand that the original conception of the Winnower's final shape is the removal of all unnecessary or weak life, I think we can start to see what the alternative final shape of the gardener might be. It is the purpose of the gardener to subvert the eternal rule of the final shape and the pattern of the flower game. The final shape to the gardener is proving that the final shape is not the final shape. It is to conquer the pattern put forth by the Winnower, that echo of terrible simplicity with a new pattern built of complexity, one that disproves the notion that the final shape must arise every time without fail. And it's here that I want to turn to something from the Final Shape trailer. This moment here, when the Guardians are shown entering a moment of transcendence whilst using Prismatic. It's here that we can listen to a voice. A voice we've never heard before, as best I know. Take this power, Guardian. Be brave in dark places. For we are the light of hope. This voice is sure to be the subject of much debate over the coming days and weeks, but I want to put forward the same question that I'll inevitably pose a few times before we reach the final shape. Is that the voice of the gardener? If so, it's encouraging us to take this power of the light and the dark, fused together in a moment of transcendence. A new shape. A new pattern. A new complexity born only of the possibility found in the Children of the Light, who also learned to wield the darkness. But that doesn't make sense, I hear you saying. The Traveler is a being of the Light. Why would it encourage us to wield darkness as well? This is true, and yet that's also a gross simplification. The Light and the Traveler, and if it exists, the Gardener, are of course linked, but they should never be mistaken as being the same, just as the darkness should not be mistaken for the witness or the winnower or the final shape. A being of light using the darkness is simply a being of light using the energies of the unseen and immaterial universe. It is not a being that believes in the final shape, it is not necessarily a servant of the witness, or one who believes in the ways of the winnower as put forth in unveiling. It is simply one creature using one kind of energy, even though it comes from a different kind of energy. It is a thing of the physical universe interacting with the dimension of thought, fate, purpose, and emotion. In this sense, it is not apostasy or hypocrisy or heresy or whatever you might call it for the Traveler or Gardener to encourage a fusion of the energies of the light and dark into something more complex. It is, in fact, something that is likely to be encouraged. 
And what's even more important is that we've seen this battle play out before. It happened long ago over the Rings of Saturn. It was a battle between Marasov and the Taken King, Oryx. Oryx believed himself victorious, and that the sword logic had once again shown its way as being the final and only shape the universe could take. And he believed this because he killed Marasov in battle. But Mara had built a complex trap that required her death as a part of its components. Mara used what was referred to as bomb logic. Whilst the sword logic is simple, singular, and requires only death, bomb logic requires many complex moving components, which on their own, individually, have no effect, but when in combination, are far more powerful than any sword. In killing her, Oryx's blade became the trigger for the bomb that killed him. And the most important part of her plan was us. The guardians that would come to kill the Taken King and bring us to a place of deliverance. The guardians that would disprove the sword logic with bomb logic that would show the explosive power of complexity. Now we step forward once again and embrace our natures as creatures of both light and dark. We take a new shape and make our own fate. It's my opinion that transcendence is called transcendence because it is the new final shape, the gardener's final shape. With that transcendence, with the use of both light and dark, we have escaped the pattern of the final shape and become the gardener's proof of victory. In doing so, I believe we have done more than simply redefine what our limits are as far as our own power is concerned. I believe that we have redefined the fate of all life in the universe going forward. It no longer needs to be the case that a single kind of strong life under the Winnower's final shape exists above all others. With our transcendence into this new Gardener's final shape, there is hope for life that embraces complexity. There is hope that the Winnower's unchanging pattern can be broken. There is hope for the validity of all life in the universe. I believe that we are the final, surest argument of the Gardener to the Winnower's notion of existence as an unchanging pattern. And in doing so, we have become so much more. We have become gods unto ourselves, capable of mastery over the physical universe and the immaterial universe, in a way that could only be done by embracing both the light and the dark. More importantly, from the Gardener's perspective, we are the anti-final shape, the proof that there is no such thing. And should we arise, should we transcend, maybe we truly can make our own fates. But that's all from me for now. Let me know what you think. Is it the case that we are the final shape? Is it something that we can see now as a great design made as a foil to the final shape of the Winnower? Do you think the Winnower and the Gardener even exist? Are you one of the people who sits there and perhaps rightly questions the validity of the law found in unveiling? No matter what, let me know down below in the comments section. If you enjoyed the video though, Go ahead and leave a like, and remember that you can subscribe for more Destiny lore and content leading up to the final shape. But as per usual, know that your viewership as always is quite enough for me. And that in the meantime, my name has been, my name is Bife. Rodasia Arastra. I'll see you, Starside.